Hey everybody, welcome back to another tutorial for our transform series. Today we're going to be talking about the cage transform. So let's get our transform activated. So that's going to be the fourth option from the left. You hover over it, it should say cage. It's kind of in the middle. We click on it. You can see that this has a lot of different, op or not a lot of different options, sorry. This has almost no options compared to the other three uh, transform functions that we did before. So we'll just go ahead and start putting um, our points down for this, which you can see here it says create three points on the canvas to begin. So I'm going to go ahead and do three and automatically I can either continue making points and close off the shape or I can go ahead and deform the selection automatically. So as you can see it it's kind of like I selected a, a portion of the image and I started transforming that selection. It's not affecting anything else around it at all. So I went ahead and undid that because I don't want to transform this part of this. I want to go ahead and transform the whole thing. So here is where it gets a little interesting. Now that I've closed off the selection of the area that I want to transform, and if you can see here, it says deform selection. Once you close the shape off, it automatically will hit or uh, choose deform selection for you. I can actually start warping everything that's near this or near these points. This is kind of like the, was it the warp tool? Yeah, it's kind of similar to the warp and the perspective. But here I am just really taking any point and moving it around. And this information is basically kind of pinned to that little anchor there. So I'm actually going to undo that. Come on, there we go. And I'm actually going to make that again, but I'm going to put my points much closer to the line art this time for the image. Move that over. So as you can see, if you click on the point, if it's black or even when it's uh, at a different point in the line here, you can go ahead and move that. And then click again anywhere else to continue making your shape. And we're going to close that off here. So now I can make some finer adjustments. Like let's say hmm, I want to just make this a little thinner here. I'm just going to squish that in. And we're going to make this arm just bulge out for absolutely no reason other than I can do that. Alright, I'm just going to hit enter. So this looks really, really goofy. But you can see how I can get some subtle adjustments without too much damage to the original work. And if you're doing just some minor adjustments like you had before, but you only really need to affect like maybe this section or maybe just like the whole side here without messing with this side, you can do that. Now for the adjust granularity, this is basically kind of affecting the precision of your transform. So the lower it is, the less precise results you're going to get, but it'll react much faster to moving the points. Right now I just left it as the default, but Creator does recommend having the preview lower than the real. So Creator does recommend having the preview to be lower than the real. So we'll just kind of keep that at 16. And we'll go ahead and move, just put some points down here. Move that. As you can see, I do have a little bit of a difference in the performance. It is moving a little bit faster, but it's also giving me a little bit more control. It's not too all over the place. All right, so I base I try to put it back to where it was before. Obviously, it's not perfect, but yeah, <laughs> it's close enough. All right, that's it for the cage tool. Very simple, nothing too complex. Pretty self-explanatory once you get the hang of it. You can definitely get some fun results, just like the warp tool, but with a little bit more 
control over where you want those points to go around your image and how many points you want to be around that image without worrying about um, adding in what is it the row uh, the subdivisions as always thank you for watching if you have any questions make sure to leave them down below in the comments i'll try to help you out best i can and let me know if this is helpful to you or if you think this would be helpful in your workflow thank you guys for watching this video and i will see you in the next one